Hello, welcome back to MathT UK. This is a hammocking video. It's purely based on the larger hammocker, shall we say. There's no hiding behind the fact that I am quite a big lad when it comes to it, so um, I need to make sure that my equipment keeps me up in the air as opposed to come crashing down in the middle of the night. And if you want to know or you want to have some ideas on how you can choose the right equipment, keep watching this video and hopefully I might be able to point you in the right direction. Welcome to MathT UK. So what is the easiest way for me to show you this? Well I'm going to break this down into three simple steps and it's going to be design, it's going to be equipment and it's going to be usage. And that's how I'm going to break it down to try and explain it a little bit clearer. The first thing we need to look at is design. This design issue can be quite an important factor when you're deciding what gear you want to buy. Um, all manufacturing of hammocks, slings, straps, carabiners, they will all have maximum in intended usage and load weight uh, marked on them, if not marked on them, when you purchase the equipment. I know for a fact that you can go to some reputable sites in America, look on the website, choose the material that you want your hammock made out of, and it will also at that point give you its maximum intended load. That is what I mean by design. It's already telling you what its intended use is. Um, I will show you some examples of, of that later on, but that is a fundamental basics of design. So we've quickly covered design and why people do what they do, bearing in mind that people who copy that will not incorporate the design itself, they will copy monkey see, monkey do. They will copy the design, but they will not test it. They will just copy what it looks like. They will um, take it apart, look at how it's made, and make cheaper copies, cheaper versions which I use myself, like in my stoves and everything. I mean, I save quite a bit of money using um, copies of stoves that uh, are very, very expensive, and I don't have a problem with you doing that. But money saved in the right places. Do not save money when it comes to keeping your butt in the air. Don't save money when it comes to keeping your butt nice and warm. But you can save money in other areas. Other areas which aren't critical to your well-being. Those are the important factors to remember. So let's look at some equipment. Let's look at some carabiners, the various different types you can get, how to identify whether they're genuine, how do you know whether they're going to keep your butt in the air or not, or whether to sort of go, yeah, that looks okay, but I'm not going to trust it. Um, how would you know? Let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at some slings, some straps. And then onto my personal favourite, which would be the Amsteel, which is um, obviously my whoopee slings. So here we are, in front of you here, I have various different sizes carabiners, a couple of straps and a piece of Amsteel. Now some of these are designed and some of these are just cheap copies. And how can you tell? I mean, looking at these carabiners in front of us, you would naturally assume this is the strongest, second strongest, third, fourth, and then finally the weakest one on the end, because sure, purely and simply because of its design. But I, because I know these, this equipment, I can tell you quite clearly that this is the strongest, without doubt. This is the second strongest, and the rest of them have no rating whatsoever. So you cannot possibly tell how much that's going to take, how much that's going to take, and how much that's going to take. Carabiners, like this one, are designed. And if you can use them for climbing, it will tell you that you can. And it will also give you its strength in kilonewtons force. What does that mean? Well, kilonewtons is a measurement of force. And uh, one kilonewton is equal to about 250 pounds. That's not dead weight pounds, that's force pounds. That's pressure applied, pulling, crushing, squashing, bending. That is what that means. When you look at a carabiner, 
closely let's get really in close into this one here you will see a series of arrows and numbers and they all mean something there we go see those two arrows there that's the length way this way and that's telling me if it focuses in that it will take 24 there we go 24 kilonewtons that way it is telling me that it will take 8 kilonewtons on a push and pull test and with the gate open that there picture there shows gate open it will accept 9 kilonewtons so that's how you can tell 24 normal with the gate closed 8 kilonewtons compressive and pulling strength this way not that way and then we have finally here we go again come on and then we have 9 kilonewtons with the gate open which you can clearly see there that little picture of a gate is open and this one was manufactured in Wales UK and there you go now just to go back to what I was saying earlier so going back onto this one which I said was the strongest second strongest one you will notice a little warning sign there saying not for climbing if we turn it around you will see on the other side four kilonewtons so what is four kilonewtons well that's about 900 pounds so this little tiny carabiner will take 900 pounds force on a pull test so pulling it apart like that 900 pounds and I use these on my UK hammocks woodsman expedition hammock let's look at these in a bit more detail not for climbing no other information on it it just says not for climbing okay when you look at it come on focus when you look at it you can see it's very cheap alloy it's been painted camouflage to look Gucci the only thing that would be good for is probably hanging your helmet off your webbing and that's probably about all that I could handle moving on to our gimmick carabiner this is purely a key ring again not for climbing written there you would be seriously concerned really if it was for climbing and as you can quite clearly see there is a, a bottle opener here um, if your carabiners come with a bottle opener then um, I would really really consider the fact that they're not really for climbing at all <laughs> and no other markings however it does have a spring gate so it's okay I do actually use this one every day I carry my keys on it so yeah this is a perfectly suitable piece of equipment but again this is not something I would use in my hammock and then finally this you can probably get 10 of these for a fire or something I don't know I, I don't know um, this you could you could bend with your fingers if, if I was to force that I would just bend it so this is really suitable for hanging your washing on or something like that and again no markings whatsoever <laughs> no no way would you use that no way would you trust yourself to that you would be quite insane to even think about it what else we got on the table is our slings so we're gonna have a look at some slings now you can quite clearly see here that this end tag is quad stitched and multiple stitches either side running up and down to ensure that this doesn't give slip or break so it's quite a very substantial stitching on that and something that I would more than happily trust in fact this is part of Dutch gear um, straps or was going over to the tenth wonder gear now you just feel the strength in that the stitching is good 
it gives you confidence that that will take weight just by looking at the design looking at the equipment how that double triple stitch there cross stitch there box stitch whatever they call it I'm not sure and then moving on to the straps another strengthener there and then onto the remainder of the straps themselves just looking at those gives me confidence and I'm quite happy that they would they would take my butt And then we are moving on to what I would consider my favourite, which is Amstel. This is uh, 1 8 Amstel and it will take a maximum load of 1000 kilograms. And that is an awful lot of weight. The beauty of Amstel that it is, is hollow cord, so you can separate the strands, you can splice things together, you can make soft shackles, you can make continuous loops, all from one material your entire hanging system except the tree huggers can be made from this material this is an awesome piece of material and there is absolutely no stretch in it whatsoever zero this is my preferred hanging method four kilonewtons that's nearly 400 kilograms remember that's 400 kilograms of pulling strength being used actual strength it's not a weight of 400 kilograms it is usage of 400 kilograms it will pull it will tow 400 kilograms that's what that will do this tiny little carabiner so can I sleep in that safe at night darn right can I sleep safe at night in those I'm still darn right that is actually a thousand kilograms it will take a thousand kilograms to break that. Not me. So you see where I'm coming from. Just by doing a little research, I know that my equipment that I have is going to support my weight. I can sleep easy knowing that that's not going to break on me. What about my straps? What about these? Well, unfortunately, there's no ticket on these. There's no wait to tell me what it will take although me personally have no problem with using these there is nothing to tell me there's been no research for me to do to tell me that these are absolutely fine um, however on um, these on uh, Dutch wear gear I think he does tell you that these straps are up to a certain amount of weight I don't use straps I don't even like straps that's why they are clean and tidy and never been used. That's why that is cut up into shreds. Not because I broke it, because I've used the material for other things. I don't like straps. I am not a strap fan. So now we've come from design. We've gone into selection and how to select the hanging equipment that's going to keep you up in the air. And we know how do you check our carabiners what information to look for on the carabiners it will tell you it's kilonewton loading if it doesn't tell you that loading don't use it it's not safe to use and those are important factors the other factor we have left to look at is the choice of hammock um, what's going to be suitable for you now a factor remember when you're looking at your hammock is that it's not just simply the weight that the hammock will take and your weight you must not just compare you and the, and the hammock's potential or the hammock's um, intended load you have to consider the equipment that you're using with it too you have to consider how heavy your underquilt is your top quilt and any other equipment that you might have in your hammock with you because they all add up each ounce each pound each kilogram will uh, bring your total up and if you're heading in this case I'm looking at a website now and it's telling me um, a Hexon W 1.6 material will take up to 350 pounds in weight total and that is how you choose which hammock is suitable for you Here we go I'm now looking at um, what I would consider to be one of my favorite hammocks and that is the DD uh, XL um, and that only has a weight limit of 125 kilograms. No, no. 
What's that in pounds? So I've just looked at my all-time favourite hammock and I was surprised to find out that it is actually only accepts um, 125 kilograms, which is about, uh, let me just check now, I am cheating here, 275.5 pounds. So let's go back to the other hammock, which was 350. So 350 pound equates to uh, 158 0.7 kilograms so you're getting there aren't we so some of the bigger lads you know we're getting there with all your kit and everything else you are pushing yourself to the limit let's have a look at one more example so we've gone two different types of hammock now we've gone for the DDXL and we've gone actually gone for the chameleon from Dutch wear gear which is much stronger than the DD hammock um, which doesn't surprise me so let's have a look at one more I've now gone on to 10th uh, Wonder Hammocks. I'm looking at my 2.8 metre hammock that I've got, 1.4 metre wide, and it clearly states there it can easily accommodate up to 120 kilograms. So this actually, in effect, turns out to be the least strongest of the hammocks that I've got, despite that being a double-lined hammock. Did I just say double-lined? What did I mean by that? Double-lined hammock? What am I talking about? Well, some hammocks are single membrane, single sheet of material, and others come in two. If you're a larger size person, I recommend that you get a double lined hammock. Two reasons. One, you can put a pad in between should you wish. And secondly, more material to keep your butt up in the air, thus giving you stronger strength. And uh, yes, heavier, twice the material, but um, there you go. It's what you want. If you're a bigger lad, you need the uh, extra material to keep you up there. 120 kilograms, you know, if you was 125, if you was 130, I still wouldn't have a problem in that. Me personally, I don't think it's gonna give it that, that too close to the mark. I think that's well designed in. That's definitely an ass covering uh, statement there. I'd be surprised if it doesn't take double that, but there you go. I can't prove that. But working on the principle and theories that I know from the construction industry, the safety factor of three, I would at least give it a safety factor of two. And I think you'll be perfectly safe. If you're getting up close around 120 kilograms, I think you'll be perfectly safe. Me. That's my opinion. Nobody The comments made in this video are purely my own personal comments. And should you have any accident or injury due to following any of my instructions, you can really blame yourself for that. That's just me covering my butt. I'm sorry, folks. I've got to do it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be getting lawsuits against me and I will not accept any responsibility for your behaviour. I'm going to add that in too. So here is a typical example of a hanging system. This is my regularly used Marlin hammock spike, out. which I made out of some aluminium tent pegs. On some elastic, I have my straps which are stitched and stitched again and a bit more stitching just to make sure and again you can see there my whoopee slings finally attached and on the other end I have my gathered end hammock which usually forms like that now then notice how I got that hammock notice how this continuous loop here has absolutely no chance of pulling over that knot. I want it that way. I have a video out. I will put in the end titles, I will put the video and showing you how I did this, how I made this. I, I'm not gonna do it now, it'd take too long, okay? But this is a double lined hammock. So there we go. So there we go, there are our two layers, one, two, very thin, very thin layers put together, combined together, make a very, very strong hammock indeed. Now this tells me that I am only allowed to put 120 kilograms in that, and I'm telling you straight now, doesn't even flinch when I get in it. I love the fact this label says this. Look 
look at that. Shall I read you what's on the other side? I love this. I hadn't had it very long before I realised what it said. I love this. This is genuine label from this hammock. Do not leave out in the sun for days on end or decades. Wash using mild soap and as little of it as possible. Dry fully before packing. Expose and resist the new world order. Be the change you want to. <laughs> there is another comment underneath, and I've never been able to see what it says because it's, it's in the stitching. And it's, I think it says, see, sown in the new, sown in the world, something. I can't, I can't actually see what that says, but isn't that just beautiful? Isn't that so funny, that? TW Hammocks, what a good, great sense of humour. Made in the UK. I love that. I really, really love that. Anyway, um, yeah, this particular type of hammock will take 120 kilograms. And the rest, they just don't want to tell you that because it puts them in, in jeopardy, not you. You now need to go out there and have a look at the different types of hammocks. You need to do exactly what I've just done. Get on the website, look at the various different types look down in the specification, see what load it carries, see what load it's telling you it can put up with, and then from there, make your choice. If you're new to hammocking, there should be two different types of hammock you should get, one for the summer and one for the winter. Or if you've got enough money, get one that does both. What I mean by that is you want one with a bug net. You can buy very cheap hammocks, very good hammocks, without bug nets and great for the winter. But when the summer comes, you do need that bug net. Uh, so make sure you uh, shop wisely. Lots of things are made in China that you might not necessarily think is. So be very careful where you buy your equipment from. Make sure that you are getting good homemade gear. Um, there are companies in the UK, you've got UK hammocks and 10th Wonder hammocks in the UK that will make hammock gear for you, and especially to order. Um, you've got some marvellous, amazing shops in America that this is their bread and butter, this is what they do, they're well ahead of the game. Um, so check out not only the UK, but you must ensure you check out the American too. Yes, you will pay... Um, tax on an import when you buy something over there and they send it to you customs will pick it up and charge you the ta more tax for bringing it in but it still works out about the same amount of money so you're not losing anything you're just not saving what you think you were originally shop around make sure you choose the one that's right for you um, there is things like the chameleon out there which is a very popular hammock right now from Dutch gear uh, that's doing really really well so yeah that's all I can do for you really I've shown you where to look for the information, we've talked about design, we've talked about equipment, we've talked about how to check. The rest is up to you. I can't do any more for you. It's up to you now to go out there and find the equipment that's going to keep you in the air. Good luck with that. Um, everything that I've shown you, I own. And uh, see you in the next one. Bye bye.